Aloha, everybody. Welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios for another episode of Security Matters. I'm your host, Andrew Lanning, and I'm joined today by Paul Ragusa, editor of Security Systems News. I'm sure a lot of you know him out here. Hey, Paul, welcome. Thanks for joining us in the studio today. Hey, Andrew, how are you? Right on, man. Good to see you. Uh, I know you're in Maine, and uh, it's a little warmer here than there, I'm sure. I uh, appreciate you unbundling yourself and getting ready to, to uh, talk with us. Um, Today, what we're going to do is talk a little bit more about your other role as, I think, program director, maybe we'll call that, is uh, for the Security Next event that's coming up in New Orleans. Um, so first of all, we'll, we'll pump that up today. But first of all, let's um, let's give our audience uh, who may not know you. I think um, you're a well-known guy, but anyone who's watching who maybe doesn't know your affiliation with the industry and how you got started, um, kind of give us a, you know, just your background, what you, what, as much as you care to share. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate it. It's nice to be on. Uh, I did want to say it's it's a little strange being on the other side and uh, being the one who's uh, getting the questions asked to him. I'm usually yeah, the one who's asked the questions. Yeah, you do a lot of these interviews, the questions. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you're turning the table on me here. Um, yeah, so I've, I've, been on the, I've been the editor for Security Systems News for about four years now, and we, you know, cover the industry from all the different angles, uh, from, you know, integrator, dealer perspective, consultant, manufacturer, you know, just all the different uh, aspects that make up the industry. Um, I come from, you know, a background, a journalism background. I was an editor for several B2B magazines in New York. I grew up in New York, moved to Maine about five years ago. So, um, and yeah, now I also program the Security Next conference, which we're going to get into in a little bit. But yeah, it's been an amazing four years in this industry, just so much has been happening. Um, it's really been a great time to be in the industry with all the changes that have been going on, all the disruption, new technologies. Uh, when I first got here, they said the industry was slow to adapt and change. And I think that was kind of flipped on its head by just all the different things that have been going on since then. So uh, that's kind of me in a nutshell. How does, um, let's talk a little bit about being an editor because it's it's so exciting. I mean, I got a little content here I produce. I've written a few things, but like, how do you choose what to talk about? Because it's, as you said, there's so many things going on. And like, so do you have to like pick a quarter, pick an episode, pick a, pick a month? Like, I just, I, I can't imagine what that's like. You must have just, I just imagine boxes of material and hundreds of thousands of emails and articles to, to sift through. Like, what, how do you decide what to put out? Yeah, you're, you're really uh, <laughs> hit, hit on one of the toughest <laughs> you know, aspects of the job is, you know, what, what do you actually report on? Uh, what's important? Uh, you know, how do you sift through all the news that's coming down and kind of, uh, you know, really present what is the most important pressing kind of topics and issues of the day. So um, there's a lot of thought and, um, you know, sometimes it's just a breaking story and you're going to report on it, but then also that you want to cover some of the bigger topics and issues and delve in kind of deeper than just the surface. So that includes, you know, reaching out to industry experts and talking to people like you about the different uh, perspectives on the topic and issue. So it, it, that is probably the, the tougher thing as an editor is to kind of uh, sift through all that noise and try to make sense of it for the readers, uh, try to simplify, you know, all that's going on because uh, it could get kind of complicated. And um, so that that is kind of, our goal here. Yeah. Do you hold um, space for hot stuff that pops up? Like, cause that, you have to print like earlier, right? A month or two ahead. You got to have kind of have ready what you're going to print or do you just do like that online? Is that easier um, to handle just like through your online stuff? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it is nice having the digital side, you know, the online side. So you things can go up immediately. Uh, and then on print, I do kind of leave the front page open for, uh, you know, breaking stories that might be coming in at the last minute there and get them on the cover. So, yeah, that is that that does play into it as well. Awesome. Uh, so it's an interesting dynamic that plays out sometimes when you get close to deadline and you're like, do I run the story? Do I have time <laughs> to run the <this> story <laughs> to write awesome. it and get it? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think people probably don't think of that. It just arrives and they're like, OK, you know, but they, they, they don't know what goes into it. So let's that that's good segue, I think, into our next bit here, the. There's a new deal. It's Security Next, and we're going to New Orleans, and I don't know if it'll always be there, but um, kind of take us to the genesis of how that came about, and um, you know, then we'll get into kind of what everybody can expect. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Um, so Security Next is bringing two, two conferences that we previously organized, Cloud Plus, which uh, people may recognize, and TechSec Solutions. So I kind of brought the best of both conferences into one conference. Uh, I know we were talking a little bit before we went on air about how many shows there are in the industry and just how insane it is to, you know, map out your year and what you're going to go to. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of time spent on the road, so you want to make sure that you're making them, you know, making the best of that time. So a lot of the thinking was our attendees were from, at both shows were saying it would be great if you brought these shows together, you know, that way it was more value. We can make it a little bit you know, longer, which is what we did there's some key elements from both shows that we brought in you know i think it it's working out uh, the program kind of represents um some of the best parts of both those shows um and i love the way that the conference kind of program came together this year it was uh, very organic i guess in the way that we did it uh, i created a editorial advisory board which andrew you're on of course so you know about that um, and I, I, my whole thinking was, you know, try to bring the, some of the key thought leaders in the industry together to just pick their brains and, and figure out what would be the best content for a, a conference today, especially with all the conferences that are going on. So, you know, obviously there's, uh, you could go on our website and see all the great people that are on that editorial advisory board. We have a, a tab set up on, the, on both the Security Next conference website and our uh, security systems news website. But, you know, it's people like yourself and, and you know, Christine Lanning, your wife, uh, Bill Bozeman from PSA, Jim Henry, um, you know, Don Erickson from SIA, uh, Janet Fenner, Rebecca Bain. So there's just, the list goes on and on of some really, really great people that have helped, kind of helped to guide the content and, and inspire, you know, a lot of the content that's in the program. Um, and we can get a little deeper into that, but that's kind of how the show was born uh, from those two shows and from the, the thoughts and ideas of our editorial advisory board. That's awesome. And was, was New Orleans always a target or I'm, I, I did a show with PSA down there a few years back, but I don't, I just don't remember a lot of shows being there. So I think it's a good choice. Yeah. You know, we were, you know, that's another tough uh, thing to, to decide where do you have, have a show today? You know, we looked up, you know, what are some of the hotter cities to have conferences? We had, uh, you know, several on the list, you know, Austin and, uh, you know, New Orleans. And uh, so, you know, I spoke to actually Bill Bozeman, who's from New Orleans, and he, he was saying, oh, that's a, it's a great idea, especially in February, you know, the temperatures are mild, uh, you know, you know it's, it's, it'd be a great place to do it. So he helped with that. I did pick some people's brains about who, you know, run conferences of their own, like Bill Bozeman's of the world to find out what, what they thought would be some good ideas. So that's, how we set, settled on New Orleans, you know, just kind of uh, rebranding the, the conference and starting in a new location. We thought that would be uh, a good idea, and it really has garnered a lot of attention. People just want to come and spend the weekend and then, you know, take in the conference, enjoy the, you know, all that's great about New Orleans. I know you've been there before, and uh, what's great is Bill put together, like, his his picks <laughs> for New Orleans, yeah. you know. So, uh, you yeah, know, get the online best restaurants, and check that the out. best clubs. Yeah, so uh, that's be sure we're gonna, you know, everyone is good to go. We'll, we'll have access to that, and uh, so yeah, it's gonna be fun to be in New Orleans. I've, I really haven't had a chance to enjoy it, so I'm gonna get down there a little early, uh, stay a, a day later, and just enjoy some of it. Awesome, that'll be fun. Well, we've also got. Um, I think a lot of people may not know how much charity work uh, these events generate. You know, the our industry is big on charity. Mission 500. I saw that. Uh, posted on there that there's going to be some uh, work going on for for uh, Mission 500 while we're there. Maybe targeting maybe targeting campaign towards the. I know there's the annual run that we always do at ISC West. Um, and then I saw you're going to have some women a women in security down there represented as well. And I'm not sure if there's a forum or an event for those folks, but that's another great group. Um, talk, um, give us a little bit, little sense of what uh, sort of the charity mission that we're going to see uh, uh, while we're down there. Well, yeah, we are. Um... You know, big proponents of uh, Mission 500. It's an incredible organization that helps families and children in need. Uh, we're, you know, one of the uh, organizing founding sponsors of the 10K race, uh, the 5K race and 2K run, uh, 2K walk uh, in 
ISC West, uh, which celebrated its 10th year last year. Yeah. Um, so this year we're very excited uh, to be part of that again. Uh, and you know, I really encourage anyone who's listening who is going to ISC West and has not been involved with Mission 500. This is a really easy way to get involved. Uh, you could sign up to to run or walk. I I'm going to walk. It's really easy. It's a beautiful morning. Uh, you know, you've got the sun rising and uh, cool temperatures. Cool, cool temperatures still in the morning. Uh, so, and beautiful mountains behind you. So, you know, it's a great cause. You go out, you walk a little bit, and if you're game, I know you used to run. I ran one year. I almost died, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's it, I. You know, there's so many ways to get involved, even you know, on an individual yeah. level, and then at a corporate level, there's so many companies that have stepped up and really given big and given their time to make, uh, you know, a lot of their events uh, successful. And at IAC West, they are also doing a house build, which, you know, mm. with Habitat yeah. for Humanity, which the, another great organization that Mission 500 teams up to give, you know, homes back to people that need them. They do backpack builds for yeah. schools with supplies. Uh, so, I mean, the, you know, they do trips uh, to Puerto Rico re most recently to help those in need. So, um, if you're not involved, if you're in the security industry and you're not aware of Mission 500, I say, you know, go to that website right now or after the show and and sign up or you know get involved. It's it's just a no brainer. Um, and then you know they're they're going to be uh, we're going to be promoting it at Security Next, of course, and trying to get people signed up for the race. And uh, so yeah, it's it's one of those organizations where you could just you know I could talk all day about how important it is to give back, especially in an industry that is doing so well and a lot of companies are making a lot of money these days as you know and uh so giving back time and maybe even some money is not gonna hurt anyone <laughs> right now in the industry so yeah for um, sure for sure and Thanks, then yeah. on the women yeah Go yeah ahead. but yeah and then on the women in security uh that that's been a real uh, fun past couple of months we we've been doing our women in security issue in december for 10 years now um, and then you're, I know you're involved with the Women in Security Forum that SIA put together. Um, and, you know, that, that whole committee, that whole forum has been great. So we reached out to them. It was just, it made a lot of sense, you know, the synergy there between uh, what we've been doing and what they're doing. And so we partnered this past year uh, and we profiled 14, you know, incredible women, uh, many of them that were recommended by the Women in Security Forum. Um, Maureen Carlo, uh, who's been instrumental in, in getting that going. I know you know her. She's been incredible throughout this. Uh, Don Erickson helped as well to get this partnership. Uh, and my managing editor, uh, Ginger Hill, really spearheaded the effort in uh, connecting with Maureen and, and the forum and, uh, you know, broadening my reach uh, to, you know, to a more diverse network of professionals is, is, is just huge. I can't tell you how much it's opening up my mind in terms of having more speakers that are, you know, female speakers and, and, you know, at our conference and getting them more involved in the, the issues and, you know, the, the articles. So, um, yep. yeah, it's, I know you're, it's, part, you know, it's a big part of what you do as well is, is to support that whole movement. So, uh, yeah, we're very happy about that partnership that we were able to you know, to connect with them this past year and, you know, take it to another level, so to speak. Awesome. Yeah, it's really good. We, um, yeah, I've sworn off the mantles, you know, I think yours is the last, I, I, before I took that oath, I had already agreed to do, I have an all male <laughs> panel at your event, but it's the last one this year. The rest have, must have one, at least one woman on the panel and hopefully 50%. I'm pushing all the guys to start to do that. Just don't, ex don't accept it unless there's women on it. Um, tell you what, we're at yeah, about the just, midpoint. Yeah, actually yeah, oh, sorry. Okay. Let's take a break real quick thing. for one minute. Yeah. We'll pay some bills and right. we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Lillian Cumi, host of Lillian's Vegan World, the show where we talk about veganism and the plant-based diet located in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm a vegan chef and cooking instructor and I have lots of uh, information to share with you about how awesome this plant-based diet is. So do tune in every second Thursday from 1 p.m. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Daylan Yanagita, one of our hosts of our Business in Hawaii talk show on the Think Tech Hawaii. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. And our guests share with us their journey to building a successful business right here at home. We are streamed live on Think Tech weekly at 2 p.m. on Thursdays. 
Thank you so much for watching our show. I am Daylan Yanagita, and we'll look forward to seeing you then. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to this episode of Security Matters. I've got Paul Raguse on here from Security Systems News, but we're talking about security next. All, um, we were just talking about the Women in Security Forum and the women in security in general. I know you've had a lot of success at promoting the women, and they're amazing. I mean, it, for me, it's an easy sell, so uh, I appreciate you doing that work. Um, the other thing that's happening at Security Next, and uh, it's awesome because there's going to be an, a, a new award, the Legends Award, and we're going to get Jim Henry up there, and we're going to see what he's got to say, and I hope it's not <laughs> politics. I hope it's industry, Jim, if you're listening. And uh, I think Bill's getting an award as well. Such a Bill's done so much for me, I, I, and, and Jim as well. I mean, uh, I'll both these guys are great, are legends for so many people. Um, what was the genesis of that award? Yeah, that's a great question. The um, you know at, at this show we're doing our forty under forty awards, which you oh, know, yeah. is celebrating you know all the young professionals in the industry. And I you know I get all the time you know you know what about an award for people that are over forty? The bald guys. You know, and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets a lot of laughs, of course, and, you know, many jokes ensue. But, yeah, the truth is, you know, it's always been on the top of mind for me is adding an award that kind of, it, it's sort of like a Lifetime Achievement Award. People mm -hmm. like Bill and Jim Henry who have dedicated their, you know, their whole careers to advancing the industry, mm -hmm. uh, you know, giving back. Uh, and you know how much Bill and Jim give back to this yeah. industry. And, I mean, I can, couldn't think of two better people to be our, you know, inaugural winners of that award. Uh, and we're going to be giving the award to them in New Orleans, which is going to be great at Security Next as part of the uh, 40 Under 40 award reception as well. So I uh, can't wait to, to give that to them in person. And what's nice and is really special is, as you know, Bill uh, Bozeman is from New Orleans. He's a native, his family, he could tell you more about this, but they've came over in 1700s, so they were there before America was America, uh, and he could tell you all about that. But to, to give, you know, Bill that, a Lifetime Achievement Award in his hometown is going to kind of be special because he's a, just a great guy, and he's been a mentor to me as, as well as Jim Henry, so very yeah. excited about giving those two the award. Yeah, that's awesome, and I, I love the I love the blending with the 40 Under 40 and then the Legends Award. It's just a, it's just a great idea. I'm looking forward to that evening for sure. Um, but what people really need to come down for, not that they don't need to come and congratulate all those folks and do some charity work, but there's going to be some great content, which we, I think, worked pretty hard to sort out. So let's walk through some of the sessions that you think are particularly interesting. Uh, maybe we'll tease the audience a little bit. Let's not give too much away or they'll, they'll, they'll wait right. for the cliff notes. Exactly. You know? come, on down, come on down to New Orleans with us. <laughs> exactly. But, um, yeah, I mean, just looking at your session uh, to start off with, because we're, you know, we're going to have a – a conference call tomorrow about that session, but uh, just an end user mega panel, you know, looking yeah. at end user, you know, what where, where they're coming from, what are some of their pain points, what are they looking to do? We have, um, you know, Travis May from MasterCard, uh, yeah. Adam Worrell from American Electric and Power, and Adam Stifler from Biogen. Uh, so they're gonna each going to give their perspective. One little teaser that I want to give away is uh, Travis May from MasterCard. He has created a, a an incredible VR program for training. Uh, so uh, imagine like, um, you know, uh, active shooter training using VR in the workplace. So uh, we're, we can, we're gonna dive into some uh, interesting topics on that, Good. that session. Awesome. Uh, and then, you know, the opening session, uh, we have, you know, a, a great keynote um, uh, sh sh from Intel. Uh, he's gonna get into smart cities, uh, you know, IOT and, AI, some really interesting topics. Um, and then the opening session, the panel uh, that uh, is kind of building off the whole theme of the show, uh, you know, the whole uh, securing profits in the age of convergence is really the mm -hmm. theme. Uh, you know, how IT, uh, physical security, uh, the impact of cyber on physical security and the convergence of IT uh, and physical security. So that first session, uh, it's going to be moderated by Pierre Bourgex. I know you know him well, uh, consultant, yeah. very well known in the industry. Uh, I can't think of a better person to to kind of frame the theme of the whole conference, you know, about how, you know, what that means for security providers today in all, in all aspects, you know, the, the bringing together of, you know, uh, IT and physical security. And uh, so that that's going to be a great, and, and Christine's on that panel. So oh, awesome. okay. she's going to do, she'll do a great job on there. Uh, we've got um, 
and then you know we have got some great individual presenters uh steve van till obviously we know yes. almost steve uh from brevo uh and you know what better person to come and talk about cloud because uh, he's going to do a session uh, i love the title of this one uh, the cloud one and now what you know because <laughs> really the he, he's been telling us for years that the cloud is yeah. is here and we really need to get on board so i'm looking forward to seeing his thoughts on where the cloud is today where it's going um and then you know we have some some incredible other individual presenters john max going to come and do uh, what he used to do at cloud every year is kind of like a financial forecast for the industry. Um, he's from Imperial Capital. I'm sure everyone recognizes his name. Uh, some more cloud. We'll have Chris Peckham coming and do doing a presentation on cloud and cloud providers. Mm -hmm. uh, we also wow. have Steve Antill moderating a session on cloud. Oh, okay. uh, a bunch of really good uh, people on that panel as well. Um, so, and then one of the highlights, I think, and kind of bringing some of the New Orleans flavor into it, we have uh, day two key keynote is going to be uh, George uh, Brown, who kind of runs the crime center down there, the oh, awesome. uh, real-time crime center. Sure. Um, so he's going to kind of give us an inside look into the crime center. And I think one of the more exciting things about that is he's also going to be hosting a tour. Uh, attendees can all go on this tour if you signed up in advance. Um, at the end of day two, we're going to walk on over to the crime center and, and go in there and get a personal tour. So hopefully Andrew, you signed up for that. Um, so I'm very, I'm very excited about that. So we're going to, you know, really have a firsthand look at the crime center, what it's been able to do. He's also going to even look at, you know, that recent cyber attack on New Orleans, which, yeah. you know, it really was amazing what, what, you know, a city can, you know, kind of ha what can happen to a city in the blink of an eye. Sure. Uh, they had to really shut everything down. He's going to discuss how they avoided disaster and were able to, you know, uh, make sure, you know, he basically had everything prepared. And so they had no, you know, negative impact on what they were doing, but they obviously he could discuss some of the ways that they were able to avoid any major problems. And so that's going to be an interesting aspect of his presentation as well. Um, so those are some of the, you know, highlights that I, I could think of, you know, right off the bat, um, yeah, that you team, know, there's going to the be team from, um, New Orleans. Um, I was, uh, with them, uh, with the, um, uh, info, I was up at Quantico at, a, at an FBI event, uh, last uh, November. And we went to town, we went to the, Her you know, downtown to the Herbert Hoover and they were part of, they were presenting some of the progress that they made for the, that FBI group, um, in uh it down in these down in you know we were downtown we were at quantico for the week but we took the bus in town and they were part of the presentation that day and they actually have a um honolulu city has been visiting with new orleans to kind of understand what they're doing because they're building out a, a center here so those guys are doing a great job of educating and sharing their experience and what they've learned helping other cities adapt some of these smart city technologies um, and, and like, as you mentioned that, uh, um, how to build some resiliency into that. So if you do get attacked in some way, uh, you, you know, you can rebound from it and not lose services to the community. Uh, so that, I think that's going to be really exciting. I hope a lot of people show up for that. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. Um, yeah. And then there's, you know, there's going to be some great panel discussions. What I love about the show is you, it's, it's not too big, you know, where you can't just walk up to someone, you know, the Bill Bozeman to the world, the Jim Henry's and just start talking to them, you know. Uh, you can walk up to the keynote and and pick his brain. That's you know the networking opportunities are really going to be uh, some of the highlights. You know we have an opening re welcome reception. Looking forward to meeting everybody. And then we have the award reception on Monday, and then the uh, you know the tour on Tuesday. So there's a lot of cool events that are you know mixed in with the you know the panels and the keynotes and the individual presentations. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited about the show. Yeah, it's going to be great. No, it's I, um, not too late. Yeah, no, I, th I, I think, um, it, well, you know, what you mentioned, so the the size thing, you know, so many people, go, you know, plan to go to ISC West, and I, I don't know about their experience, but for me, the smaller events, I get so much more contact with people, so much more sort of one-on-one -on -one networking time because they're not so busy. They're not so pulled away um, by, by, you know, all that's going on. And so I, I, um, I applaud you for keeping it, 
you know, keeping it industry uh, relevant because when you can get uh, next to someone who's done something different, as you mentioned, like what we may hear about what MasterCard's efforts been, things like that, when you can get there and go through it, spend the time to go through it and listen and understand what's good, what's bad, what was hard, what was easy, it really brings value for these events. And, you know, the more we're pretty much a sharing industry anyway, right? And so the more mm -hmm. people can absorb when they go back to their community, they're able to share that much more. And so I really do applaud you for, for working on this, you know, to build the the content, make it relative and not, you know, have another, you know, 10,000 man army descending upon New Orleans, you know. Hey, do you think we'll have it? Um, <laughs> you think you'll stay in New Orleans? Like maybe sometime we'll be butted up against Mardi Gras or something like that? <laughs> yeah, right. I know. It's another thing, the timing of when do you do this? You yeah. Know, do you stay away from the big, the big events, you know, there, you know, the Jazz Fest and sure. Mardi Gras? Or do you, you know, because you, you do, you don't want to get caught up in that yeah, yeah. as well. But yeah, that, that was an interesting idea to have it before or after. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know about having it after people just be yeah, they already, zombies. They're toasted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I got about 30 <laughs> seconds left. Um, Give us a, your final teaser and I hope all of you will come down and see us at Security Next. Yeah, it's uh, not too too late to sign up. So, you know, go to our website, securitynext.com, sign up, uh, you know, and uh, sign up for the tour, for the Crime Center. Um, and then uh, one shameless plug. I know we're we're doing your podcast, but we're about to launch a podcast as well. Oh, awesome! So keep an eye, keep an eye out for that. Um, we'll definitely have you on there, Andrew. Yay! <laughs> and uh, so yeah, and other than that, we're also launching a new website this year. So okay. we're excited about that, and um, a lot of good things happening at the publication. Awesome, Paul. Uh, you know, applaud your success, man. I really I'm happy to see Security Systems News supporting the industry the way they have. They're sort of one of the standard, you know, benchmark media companies in the industry that we all know. And I know you've you've been the guy that sort of grew that and helped it happen. So I really appreciate that, and I appreciate you sharing your time with me here today. I know you're a busy guy with the show coming up. Um, get down to Security Next, folks. Uh, New Orleans. Uh, when is it? The, it's week after next. I know that. Yeah, it's February 9th through the 11th. 9th through the 11th. February. So get your tickets. Come on down. We'll see you there. Paul, I appreciate it. Audience, take care. Aloha, everybody. We'll see you next time.